thing I'm most excited about tonight. What do you got? Is this movie trivia game. Um, Alyssa Milano. That is correct. Yeah. Wow. Matthew Broderick. No! Try Senatorius Todd. Try Senatorius Oh, no! no. no. Try Senatorius Todd! Try what I just saw! Did he drop the floor? <laughs> Very close. That's the famous Stallone mug. I want to know if you do yourself the honor of maybe like kind of marrying me. <laughs> that blue fairy thing screw me. Yeah. yeah. Watch Pinocchio. It's the blue fairy guy. Uh, Whoa. Wow. We just went explicit. Wow. Arlov is upset. Dude. Yeah. Don't even look me in the eye. He's, he's upset about that blue fairy. He's red in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Harlov. That blue fairy sucks my balls. I uh, I got the right answer. How many, How many points? Bet? I did not bet enough points. What? JT is I win? the winner! I'm a, I'm a firm believer in trial and error. And I believe my client is on trial. It's in error. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Riley is your winner. Advancing to the next round. <laughs> this is a destruction. <laughs> <laughs> Jute has no points left, and Mark Riley is the winner. All right, Riley, Damn. you won the entire Ultimate Shimoda, and you get to go. Peace out, Mother S. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmoda. 40 competitors going at it. Who's going to be the last person standing? Five competitors will start at the table. People who have the lowest amount of points on the desk will be eliminated, and then new competitors will enter. You We're never know who's coming down the ramp next. You guys can be there to watch it all go down in downtown LA. Give it up for John Humphrey, by yeah, the way. Wow, Irwin has not missed head to head to head to head to figure out who is the ultimate champion here. This is something special. What movie does Holborn die? Uh, two Towers. Yeah, Two Towers. Build a Pony of Company as a Hobbit and the rest of the Fellowship from Wood. Big Bad Jay Washington. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. What are you getting, some last minute studying in there, pal? What is this? What is all this crap? But you need more than a steno pad to beat the smasher, you know that, right? I got news for you. You're a big deal, and everybody loves you, but we're the future, and get used to it. So I appreciate you giving us a match. I appreciate you letting us come into your world, but just know this, it's our time, pal. So if there's anything you gotta say about that, I'd love to hear what you gotta say. Pick up my goddamn notebook. Easy, man. It's just trivia. Take it easy, okay? <laughs> and speaking of trivia, might I introduce to you the Smasher? Oh, yeah. You hear that noise in your head, Jay? That's the inner voices in your head saying, my inner geekdom career is over. Let's go, Smasher. They let anybody in this damn league. All right, the last Jedi. Ninka. Ninka. The A. I mean, go. Welcome back to the 
the movie trivia showdown. What a match we have here. This could headline a pay-per-view. Oh my goodness. I'm Christian Harlow, joined by the host of Inside Showdown, the pit boss, Ken Napsaga. Hey, here. happy to be here, happy to be here. You know what there, Chairman? Sometimes you make mistakes at the top. Sometimes you get things right. And I think this match today uh, is, is a great match with the two competitors. Uh, good job, you. Good Thank job, you. I'm, I'm so good happy. job, I'm so happy. Good job, I'm so you. happy that you, uh, you, you, yeah. you like my what I'm talking about uh -huh. here, Ken. So, look, this is a, this is a really big match because this is going to determine a lot. First mm -hmm. of all, these are two of the best players to ever play the game, yes, and sir. they've never faced each other in singles before. They faced each other in teams back in the 2017 tournament mm -hmm. with John Roca getting the W with the now defunct uh, top 10 team. Mm -hmm. but, but now, but Mark, Mark Andreco had, had a hell of a year last year. He challenged for the title last year. John Roca challenged for the title last year and won it, although he hasn't performed since his loss to Ethan Irwin at Schmodown Spectacular. But the winner of this match here today will not have an easy road to get to that title. They will be put into a triple threat match with Ethan Irwin and William the Beast Bibiani. Wow, that's, that, that, that's, that is a... That is an epic matchup, and you know Dan is sitting up there with that belt, and he he looks out in this field of, of contenders and competitors, and I don't think Dan ever gets scared or or worried, but he has to look at what's coming for him, and 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 and, and feel like he's got to get ready for a big time match because these two guys bring a lot of knowledge and a lot of passion and competitive spirit. Well, it's funny you say that because I actually saw the champion at a screening, and I told him yep. well, this is what was going down. I said there was going to be that they were going to fight it out and put through the grinder, and he said, "Good, let him earn it." You know. Know, because that's that's yeah. the kind of competitor that Dan is. He said he wants them because whoever comes out of that mm -hmm. will have earned it, even if it means it's part of his team, his his teammate and stablemate, the outlaw John Roca. And it's funny because the champion will yeah. be walking out with John Roca today, but they have a mutual respect. They want to face each other, but that's not a sure thing. Mark Andreco, he is the android. He is one of the best players that we have seen in this league, and it's a reason why that he is going to Chicago in a number one contender match against Who's the Boss in the live event at the SchmodownLive.com in Chicago. So I'm ready to get going. You ready to hear what uh, these guys have to I'm say? I'm absolutely ready to hear. All right, here we go. Let's hear it. In 2019, the Outlaw is back in the singles division. Got a new hat, new attitude, new mission. My fellow horseman, Dan Merle, we go way back. Rivals now friends, but he's always been the example, the shining example of this league. And if there's anything I want to do is to match every one of his accomplishments and winning a belt a third time. We'll see what happens. You know, the Schmodown fandom love Mark and Draco for so many reasons, but one of the big reasons is they feel he's one of the greatest players to never have a belt. The greatest player to never win a belt, so that makes me uh, Glenn Close or Peter O'Toole of the Schmodown. You know, I would really like to win a singles title, but truth be told, I think uh, I'm having more fun playing teams with Snyder because we, we did, we were on the same faction in the Lions Den before, and we are definitely have two different areas of strengths. And I think he's making me a little bit more aggressive and I'm making him a little bit more likable. So it's, and Roxy, if, if I could, I, I would always want Emma to stay the manager, but if I had to get someone else, Roxy has been a phenomenal manager. And I think I can say this right now is gonna be a contender for manager of the year at the end of the season. You know, they call him an android because it feels like he's not even human when he's in that ring. John is a, John is a complicated competitor. He's super smart but he's also super emotional. If he gets thrown, it tends to get to him, whereas I've been learning to do slow and steady wins the race and trying to be calm and think through things. One of the toughest competitors I've ever faced, faced him in teams. Nost and I had to set the points record just to beat that team, they were that good. And if he misses a question that he should know, he'll start beating himself up so much that that's like pulling a string on a sweater. He will just be a ball of yarn at the end of it, so. And after I take care of the android, well, well, well. Then I get to go to a three-way with Ethan and Bibiani. Bibiani, with that website, which basically is like state-run television for his points of view, and Ethan Irwin, the man who beat me, who took the belt from me, the man who made people call me a transition champ now. So this is not getting any easier. It's, it's leveling up in a way that is exhausting to even think about. Just to face the great one, the greatest of all time, in my opinion, Dan Merle. 
You know, he's not only just next to me as the founding father, he's not only just next to me on the Mount Rushmore of the Schmodown, he's also someone I gotta take down. And someone, if you look at the record, I've done really well against. Uh, Mr. Roca, I hope this is a, uh, a fun match for the fans. I hope it's a high scoring match because uh, those are always the best ones. And I really hope I beat you. And I hope I beat you by stealing your Westerns questions. Forget the hearse, because I never die. I got nine lives, cat size, abusing every one of them and running wild. And that's what I'm gonna do in 2019. Running wild is the outlaw. Gonna bring the title back, put it back across my shoulder and ride off into the sunset with it. That's how it goes. Android, you're just in the way. You're going down today. lot of respect there too but they both have the same mission and it's funny that mark andreco said that because it's true the fans have been saying that they have deemed mark andreco he is the best player who has never won a championship yet he's so close he's come so close so many times he's right at the edge to get that team title with snyder he's right at the edge to try to get a shot to that singles belt and then you got john roca john roca who has won the championship twice he has won the team championship once he has also been playing kind of catch up with dan merle you know he Dan Merle had won the championship twice, and then John won it twice. Dan Merle just won it a third time. Can John do it for a third time? So much, so much to happen, and this match is the beginning of it all. This is where it begins. The road to championship gold is out in front of both these competitors. All right, here are notable accomplishments. Mark and Draco was in a championship match and took Bibiani to the brink, won the triple threat at the Collider Collision, has been in multiple, multiple tournaments and done very well, and is a number one contender match coming up here April 13th. The outlaw, John Roca, a former team champion, a former, uh, excuse me, ultimate Schmodown finalist in 2016, and the former two-time movie trivia Schmodown champion of the world. World. All right, Ken, with that, you ready to get going? I'm just amazed that all that is in your brain. I'm exhausted. I'm not. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmoda. Yeah. It's my football, Ken. It's my yeah. football. You can rattle off all uh, the players. You know, you're right. There you're you right. Introducing first, representing the odd couple with a record of six wins, five defeats, and one knockout. He is the 2018 Ultimate Schmodown single semifinalist and the number five ranked contender, Mark the Android Andreco. He's out. He's up out. By himself here today. He's out. Is Roxy, did Roxy get a, what did Grace do? I don't, don't look at me. What did Grace don't do? Don't look at me. There's nothing. If Roxy can't get here, Roxy can't get I here. I know for a fact that Roxy was supposed to be here, and again, not here. Something is going on. Your girlfriend, Ken. I, That's look, what they're saying. Look, it's, you know, flighty, flighty help is flighty You're help. You're denying any, any uh, accusations. Oh. I categorically deny anything and everything. All right. And his opponent. Representing the Five Horsemen, led to the ring by the movie trivia Schmodown champion of the world, Dan Murrow, with a record of 11 wins, 7 defeats, and 3 knockouts. He is the former movie trivia Schmodown team champion and the former two-time movie trivia Schmodown champion of the world, the outlaw, John. It looks like something Lemmy from Motorhead would have worn. Old school oh, shirt. Old school shirt. Old school shirt. Old school shirt. Is, is is shape. Yeah. Look at that. And there he is with the champion. The champion there giving him uh, a, a like hug. A hug. Yeah, a yeah. hug. It's and, a warm but it's also, oh, oh, it's touching the back. <laughs> 
It's shaking Marks. hands. It's a lot of respect. Here. You know what? Here's what it is. Uh, I, we, here's what I love about the Android and Draco. Look at him. He's calm. He's collected. He's got his Wonder Woman T-shirt on. Valium. Uh, Valium <laughs> is the thing, but uh, he is a killer in his own right. The outlaw, a lot of intensity. You can feel it emanating well, off of him right now. they both want it here, Ken. They both want it. The question is, who wants it more? And we're about to find out. Round number one, the competitors will get eight questions. Eight questions worth one point apiece from subjects all over the movie universe. And they cannot steal, obviously, in this one. They have 15 seconds to answer the question. You have three JTE rules. You got one challenge. And that's pretty much, that's the gist. So that's I will gist. ask first, the outlaw, are you ready? Absolutely. And the android, are you ready? Sure. Then let's get ready to schmodown. <laughs> all right. Here we go, guys. To finish. Animated begins this. <laughs> Animated. <laughs> the character Figaro is what type of animal in Disney's Pinocchio? Ooh. Did you ever sing that thing? Yeah, and I always think of Rob Williams. Yeah. Five, four, you heard that? Three, <laughs> two, one. John Roca. Uh, cat? Yes, oh. and the android. Cat. There you go. One, <laughs> one. One. <laughs> one. <laughs> Somebody heard that. It smells like chicken up here. <laughs> Question number two in the category of action adventure, action slash adventure. In Skyfall, Naomi Harris plays Eve, who is revealed to be what famous character? Was it interesting purpose? Uh, yeah, just kind of slipped out. Have you seen a doctor recently? No, it just happened. Okay. Five, yeah. four, it doesn't really answer your question. Three, <laughs> two, one, Mark. Miss Moneypenny? Yes. That's John. Right. Moneypenny? That's Here we correct. go. Tie game. That's okay. correct. Tie game. 2-2. Two, two. All right, guys. We're going to switch up here and go to Oscar movies. Oscar movies. Which movie got Clint Eastwood his first Oscar for best director? First. First one. First. First. Have you ever been up to Carmel? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eight gas. <laughs> Five. Four. Three. Two, one, pens down. John. Unforgiven? Yes, Mark. Unforgiven. High game. High game. This is the match we thought it would be, Ken. Yes. Number four comes in the category of horror thriller. Horror thriller. Who directed 1976 Stephen King classic Carrie? Going back to the 70s. This is a tense matchup already. Jesus. Three points each. Scrambling, Five, scribbling their answers. Four. Maybe. Three. Two, Maybe. one, Mark Andreco. Brian De Palma. That's yes, correct. and John. <sighs> Brian De Palma. Tie game. Four, four. Uh, okay. Here's the next All one. Right. Fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. What is the profession of Bruce Willis's character at the beginning of the fifth element? Mm. The beginning of the lunch I have, I didn't have the stomach problems I have now. No? no. You, same you? Yeah, no. Yeah, it's been one. And I just had fuzzy, buzzy water, whatever that means. Five, four, <laughs> three, <laughs> two. <laughs> One pens down. John. Taxi driver? Yes. Mark. Taxi driver. And now it's five to five. Yes. Look at that. Yeah. Question number six. Question number six comes in the category of comedies. Comedies. What two actresses star as sisters throwing one last party before selling their family home in 2015's Sisters? Go back to 2015. Five. Four. Three, two, one, hands down. Mark Andreco. Amy Poehler and Tina Fey. You got it. Amy Poehler, Tina Fey. Tie game. Tied up, my friend. Tied up, my friend. All right, so now both players have not missed, and we get to question seven, coming of age. Coming of age. Oh, All right. In the sandlot. <laughs> which, which DCEU actor plays a teen named Patrick in the film The Perks of Being a Wallflower? One of my uh, one of my favorite books. I actually read books. It's a great so, yeah, movie read, and book. Put on yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down and John. Ezra Miller. Yes, and Andrea. Ezra Miller. High game. That's correct. <laughs> Perfect Lucky. game for both of them. It's wow. a great movie. All right, so far. So here we go. This is the last one. All right. Question number eight is a Patreon question. Patreon question. The following question comes to you from patron Jake Hammer. Thank you, Jake, for supporting the show. The category is dramas. Dramas. 
In 2015's The Martian, who stars as the young astrodynamicist? Wow. Rich Parnell, who formulates a plan to rescue Watney. Astrodynamicist? In 2015's The March Martian, who stars as the young astrodynamicist Rich Parnell, who formulates a plan to rescue Watney. Watney. I'm not one for science. That's fine. I don't know the words they use to describe That's themselves. Right. And five, four, <sighs> three, maybe two, one. Pens down, please. Mark Andreco. No idea. And John. Donald Glover. That's correct. Perfect round for John Roca. Nice Perfect round for John Roca. So only he will have this bonus question here. Woo. Bonus question for John Roca. If he gets it, then he will be up by one more. Excuse me. If he gets this, he'll be up by two. He has a one-point lead here. Here, all right, John. This is only for you. You don't have to write it down. Your bonus. The original Taken film starring Liam Neeson was released in what year? Oh Jesus Christ. Jeez, and right. Fucking hell. I mean, well, Movie release dates has to be the one. That's, a, that's what it is. Yeah. 2010. 2008. Incorrect. 2008. Incorrect. Right. So eight to seven, and round number two begins with the outlaw having a one-point lead in a great first round. Yeah, great first And we start out. Here's round number two. Here's how it goes. The competitors will spin the wheel. If it lands on a category they do not like, they can spin again, unless, of course, it lands on opponent's choice. Each one is worth two points, unless, of course, they go to multiple choice, then it goes down to one point. You can steal in this round, and I believe that both competitors have all of their JTE rules left. Uh, yeah, well, first I want to remind everyone this day's wheels match is sponsored by our Schmodown patron, Jake Burnham, on patreon.com slash Schmodown. The sponsored wheel slices for today's match are Tom Hanks, and get ready, crowd, Meryl Streep. There it is. Meryl Streep. All right, a wheel slice for today's match was sponsored by one of our Schmodown patrons on patreon.com slash Schmodown. The sponsored wheel slice for today's match is action slash adventure. If we land on that, we'll reveal who supported that slice. I love it. Okay, all right, John, so you have a one-point lead. Would you yeah. like to go first or second? Uh, no, I'll uh, defer to my opponent. All right, so... All right, it is a close game. This is, It's almost just a... There's the spin. The time. You know that Andrico's looking for musicals. You yes. know he's looking for musicals. Musicals. Meryl Streep is for the sure. crowd favorite here. They are chanting for Meryl Streep. It might not even just be the question. It's just Meryl in general. Oh, well, it's coming it's around. It looks nice. It looks like a nice round. Oh. To Julia Roberts. It no be drama. 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 He is debating. Could be a big, ca He's big category, but can also be something in his wheelhouse. So I can see the dilemma there for, yeah. for Andre. We are going to need a decision. He's going to spin again. He's going to spin again. Spinning away from it. Wow. He went away from dramas. The crowd wants Meryl Streep again. Yeah. Well, here's the question. Here, here we, go. we go. Coming down here. It is. Mm. Uh -oh. Pass. uh oh, look at this. Oh, it boy. could land. be, no, no, no. no. Oh. Julia Roberts. Nice. Julia, Julia Roberts. Roberts. Uh, sir, Julia Roberts. would you like to do the honors? You got it? Uh, I've got it if you okay. got it. It's got a Go strong cheering it. section in the crowd. All guys. right, I you're like going that. to get four questions in the category of Julia Roberts films. Julia Roberts films. I will not be stealing any of these, just to let you All right. <laughs> Remember, you do have multiple choices. Never first, say never. <laughs> first question. First question. What song does Rupert Everett's character inspire an entire... Say a little prayer. Uh, right, that is two <laughs> All right, second question. What is Tess Ocean's job in Ocean's Eleven? Hmm. Multiple choice. A, decorator, interior designer. B, art curator. C, event coordinator. D, concierge. Event coordinator? Incorrect for one point steal. Art curator. That's correct for one, one point, point steal. Tie game, wow. tie game. He did steal after all. All right, Mark, third question. You get four. Who directed 1999's Runaway Bride? Oh, Gary Marshall. That's correct for two points. All right, all right. Final question in this round. In 2010's Valentine's Day, Julia Roberts spends a majority of the film on an airplane seated next to what actor? Five. 
Uh, multiple choice. A, Bradley Cooper. B, Patrick Dempsey. C, Jamie Foxx. D, Topher Grace. Bradley Cooper. That's correct for One points. Point. All right, so, all right. And Draco sees himself with a three-point lead yeah. as the outlaw hits the wheel. If the outlaw can get something that he likes, then he's got a good position to get himself a nice lead. However, if he doesn't, then he could put himself even farther behind the android. All right, yeah. John, go ahead. Champ, uh, former champ saunters up there. Yeah. Well, he looks determined here. He I mean, does. He's, That's he's, a good spin. I'd say the spin is in on that one for sure. The fire is definitely in the outlaw's eyes right now. You see it. He's, he's kind of cool, calm, and collected. Yeah. But he's playing against an android that's pretty uh, pretty solid right now as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, but look at this, though. I mean, this is moving around in a position that does not oh, look pretty. It, it does not look sliding. pretty. It does not look pretty. Oh, he got it. Too. He got is away from it. Is he going to take musicals? No, is he? Is he going back to his seat? He's uh, singing yeah. in his he's brain. <laughs> <laughs> and Draco's calling him a chicken. Uh, we're going to need an answer soon, though. Going to give you a five count here. We're going to... Five, four, three... He's going again. Oh, this is it. He's going to sit down now. You know, he's got to take what's coming down the pipeline Well, he's here. looking for sports. He's looking yeah. for biopics. Yeah, he's got that finance. steal it's in that round. Like you, know, you know he's great with Westerns. He is. There's a lot on there that he that is good for him, but he definitely yeah. wants to stay away from. Oh, no. Here we go again. Oh, it's sliding back. This time back. it's coming it back around. It is going to One be. One more. Ridley Scott. Oh, Ridley Scott shit. films. Ridley, Ridley Scott. Scott. All right. Yes. Ridley Scott. All right. So this is up in the air here. lucky to tie you. All right, we got four questions. Yep. All right. I'm not going with Ridley Here Scott. Here we go. Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott. All right. What model of car do Thelma and Louise drive around in the film Thelma and Louise? Uh, multiple choice, please. <laughs> a, a, Thunderbird. B, Mustang. C, Camaro. D, Corvette. I don't know. Thunderbird? Correct. For Ooh, one correct point. For a point. Yep. All right. Question number two. Who plays Ramses in Exodus... Gods and Kings. Most historically accurate film ever. <laughs> that is not true. Five, four, three. Damn, multiple two. choice. A, Christian Bale. B, Eric Bana. C, Joel Edgerton. D, Ben Mendelsohn. Joel Edgerton. For one point. That's for a point. Okay, that's question right. number two. And Here's question three. Mascara. Question three. What Ridley Scott directed spy film stars Leonardo DiCaprio and Russell Crowe? Uh, multiple choice. A, Body of Lies. B, Spy Game. C, Breach. D, Ronin. Body of Lies. Correct That's for correct. one point. Nice game here. All right, last question here, John. Last question. Which actress played Mission Commander Lewis of Mark Watney's team in The Martian? Five, four. Can you repeat that question? Yeah, it's first one. Which actress played Mission Commander Lewis of Mark Watney's team in The Martian? Jessica Chastain. Two points. John hits it. And Got with it. that, he Get takes it. himself. Got it. Yeah, takes himself into the third round now. Round number three, here we go. So it goes like this. The competitors will pick three numbers from one to 20. Three numbers from one to 20. And the first one worth two, the second one worth three, the third one worth five points. All right, so because, John, you have a two-point lead yeah. here, please pick from one to 20. May I consult with my teammate to pick the number out? Is that possible? Is He's that not acting as, as your manager, so no. Okay. No. All right. Not filed the paperwork. <laughs> uh, six, eight, and 18. Six, eight, and 18. Okay, and Andreco. Uh, one, two, and three. One, one two, two, and three. And three. Look at that. All right, so we're going like to start. That. I like that. We're going to start with the Android. We're going to start with the Android who chose category one. Category one. Two thousands. Mm. Two thousands. All right. Mark, here you go. Who received an Academy Award for Best Actor in a Supporting Role for his performance in 2003's crime drama Mystic River? Five. Tim Robbins? Correct. For two That's points. Correct. Two points. Now, yeah. now we bounce to John. All right. And John chose category six. Category six. Category six. That category, Roca, is Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks films. Three point question. Two point question. Excuse me. Two point. Two point question. Sorry. Thank you. Make sure you read the two point. 
two-point question. <laughs> read the five-point. I know, read I the know five point. corruption. I know. Okay. All right. All right. Two-point question. Tom Hanks starred alongside Halle Berry, Jim Broadbent, and Hugo Weaving in what film? Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. All right, just like a one. Tom Hanks starred aside. Long, uh, start. Tom Hanks starred alongside Halle Berry, Jim Broadbent, and Hugo Weaving in what film? Oh, Cloud Atlas. Correct. Two points. Wow, two you points. got it. Two got points. It. All right, now we bounce back Jesus to and and Draco. Now we bounce back to and Draco, who chose category number two. Mark will be happy with this one. You chose musicals. Musicals. All right, here you go. Who played Christine in 2004's The Phantom of the Opera? Emmy Rossum. Three points. That's correct. Three points. Three points for Mark. There. And now we bounce. That's a three. And now we bounce to Roka, who's got eight. Number eight. You chose oh. number eight. The number of the all-time greatest catcher for the New York Mets, Gary Carter. Uh, number three. Category is classics for your three-point question. Oh, fuck. Classics. Okay. What was Charlie Chaplin's first true talking picture? Call them talkies. Oh, the great dictator. That's correct for three, three points. points. Wow. What a fight. It is the fight we thought it would be. It is. And now Mark and Draco um, has a chance. Um, 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 I, I... Just for the hell of it, I would like to challenge that because he only speaks at the very end, and by saying true talkie, that's a full talking Then film. the answer is limelight. All right, we got Either a challenge way, on it. the table. We got that's a fun. challenge, challenge on, on the table yeah. here. Challenge on the table. Um. All right, we're making a judgment on the call here, too. The wording of the question was a little wonky. It was supposed to be the first technical talking pitcher. Um, John Roca did answer both both what the technical term and what the uh, obviously first true talking pitcher was. So because of it, we are going to award John Roca the three points. And we go back to 1917. That is a decision that we are confident we had the singles commissioner come in, too. So there's a lot of debate on that one. But 1917, and now we get to the five-pointer for Mark and Draco. If he hits the five-pointer, if he hits it, it will bounce back to John Roca. If he misses, John Roca will advance to the triple threat match against against Ethan Irwin and Bibiani. So it's category number three is what Mark and J Draco chose. Here we go. Mark, for your five-pointer, you told Martin Scorsese movies. Martin Scorsese movies. Here we go. Name two of the three actors that play Nicolas Cage's paramedic partners in Bringing Out the Dead. No clue. No answer? Nope. And your winner, ladies and gentlemen, you got it. the outlaw, John Roca. No answer. No answer. Roca does it, and he makes it. He makes it. He makes it. He makes it to the match. 19. Uh, Mark unhappy. The uh, end of the match works off. Uh, Roca kind of subdued there, uh, but uh, bringing out the dead. The final one there. Uh, the it was side and round. It was a great match. It was a great match, and because of it, Mark. I mean, excuse me. Uh, John Roca is going to that triple threat match now. Triple threat match between Ethan, Ethan Irwin, and. Bibiani for that number one contender match. It's going to be interesting. It absolutely is going to be interesting. That one, the road to the gold, as we said, uh, moves on for John Roca. Uh, will he face his teammate for that gold? He's got a big obstacle in front of him. And Ethan Irwin, the former champ, and William the Beast Bibiani, the former champ as well. All right, well, let's go to Jen Sturger, who is with both Mark Andreco and John Roca. Here we go. I want to say, though, I am really proud of him and for Absolutely. how he played today. I mean, two really fierce competitors out there, and you just never know the way it's going to go. And I think a lot of times you get incredibly heated, and I'm going to work with Mark on figuring out ways to make sure that the rules are fair for everybody across the board and talk to Christian about it. And we definitely will be in Chicago, and we'll be there and having even more fire behind us now. Thank God. Well, best of luck in Chicago. Thank I you hope so much. You can, uh, I hope you can get this sorted out. And I don't want to deal with another one of those after Chicago, so hopefully it goes our way there. So. Yeah. <laughs> Someone told me you got another phone call. What was that about? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I honestly believe that if I had not received that call, that maybe I would have been here to de-escalate things. So now she's even more on my crap list. I mean, I, I, when I think it can't get any worse, it does. And she is despicable and playing dirty, and uh, two can play that game. All right. Well, glad you made it here. Might want to go check on Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Best Thank of you luck so in much. Chicago. Thank you. And I'm back with the outlaw, John Roca. You are yeah. shaken yeah. right now. Listen, uh, Andrako gave me everything I could possibly want in a match. Uh, I feared him like crazy. They call him the android because at times it doesn't feel like he's human because he knows so much about movies. And, uh, you know, the wheel looked, in my opinion, it was tilted in his favor, a lot of categories. So the odds were stacked against me. I was a little nervous going through the whole game. And we went toe-to-toe -to -toe all the way to the end. It's unfortunate the way it went down. But uh, for once, it's nice to be on the right side of a decision. And so, uh, you know, either way, I played my heart out. I got nothing to be ashamed about. I knew the answer either way, and uh, I move on, and that's how it goes. And But I feel for Mark. I, I know that anger. I've been I was in just that gonna place, say, so I know. You are not it's... a stranger to controversy no. here. How do you move on from something like that if you're Mark Andreco, you know? Just yeah, I don't know. From personal experience. Yeah, exactly. I think you take time, step back, see if you really want to keep continuing, and then focus on up. And because there's other competitors to go take down, there's other roads to walk down. And look, my boy Dan bounced back from a loss to Andrew Guy and is wearing the title again. So just because you fall down or have things go against you doesn't mean you can't get back up and climb back up the ladder. Absolutely. And speaking of the guy next to you wearing the title, you two obviously will now be facing off. Well, you will be facing off with Bibbs and yeah. with Ethan. Yeah. Two-Face Dan. Yeah. It's a There's daunting There's just a lot test. of questions right now, obviously. <laughs> well, ask away, you know? Jen. What, I mean, who are you fearing most going into that three-way match? And then... Oh. What's that going to do to the chemistry, obviously, with the Founding Fathers, should you face Dan? Well, I think, uh, you know, it's ironic having Dan next to me. The last triple threat match I was in was against Mark Riley and this man right here, Dan Merle. And I Oof. ended up coming out on the losing end even after dispatching. We dispatched Riley. I still came out on the losing end thanks to the damn back to the future question. But, you know, in the end, what it is is about keeping your mental stability through the whole game, believing in yourself and fighting through it. These are two incredibly knowledgeable guys. Dan, you faced Ethan at that live event in New York. I faced Bibiani and took the title off him so three of the most recent title winners going at it there's no way I can pick a favorite or which one I'm more afraid of they all have their strengths and they all have their weaknesses it's going to be a hell of a battle but at the end of the day I want it and I hope that's enough to carry me through out of that battle and on to face Dan absolutely I just hope our studio can hold up during it because it's going to be it's going to be one of those matches that I feel like is going to tear the house down yeah I so. look forward to that fight I look forward to that fight I look forward to, 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 to facing off whoever comes out against it and I know there's going to be a lot of talk about today's match I hate when matches end in controversy like that Don't it's just we all? It, it's it's bad for the winner it's bad for the person that doesn't come out on the, the other league. side Let's it's, be honest. it's bad for the league and and I think what it comes back to is uh, you know the the ruling there was, they were already in a no-win scenario. Either yep. John was going to be extremely upset by it or Mark was going to be extremely upset by it. I think what we got to look at as a league is make sure that we do everything we can to not get in that kind of position again. And to keep some kind of consistency going. I you agree. Know? You know, consistency, if it's going back to the rules and, and, and going through every possible scenario, I know that seems like it's impossible to do, but I think it's also going through the questions. I think a word like true being in that question, mm. that's a little subjective. That's a bit hazy. It's a bit fuzzy. And when you leave that wiggle room in there, I think you have room for what happened here today when I played Andrako there was a question that we ha I had to challenge because it was just flat out uh, inaccurate I, I think that we have a there's a great team that runs throwdown there's a lot of people that put a lot of time and effort into putting these matches together I think that we just have to make sure that these matches are gone through with a fine tooth comb to make sure we do everything we can to make sure that we don't get in another situation like this because there's there's you know John may have won the game but it's really a no win scenario mm. uh, in a lot of ways because there's always going to be that cloud over it there's always going to be those questions and, and, and anger and, and nobody wants that nobody absolutely wants that. Yeah. so much talent so much wisdom up here with me congratulations again John thank you good luck in that three way match man it's going to be intense and uh, I personally can't wait to watch me too thanks um, we'll see if I can do it speaking of no win scenario that match for me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Andrakos obviously was a little heated about the wording of that question, and I understand. It's like, look, there was, we know what the writer was trying to get at there with the technical version there too. John Rocco had both uh, both answers, so that we're confident in the decision that we made in the desk here. But it was um, it was a match. It was a good match. It was straight to the wire. They both fought really hard, and John Rocco sees himself with a win. And you see in that interview where Dan and John had the conversation, he's encouraging them there, and then John's getting heated up because now he gets to face 
once again, a guy that he beat for the title and the guy that beat him for that title, mm -hmm. Ethan Irwin and Bibiani. Uh, a lot of stuff. It is a competitive sport. It it, it, it gets a lot of uh, the competitors, just their juices flowing, good and bad, uh, and that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. But that's, that's what we got. We got a big three-way dance coming. All right, so and now we ask you guys to just to let you know, April 13th, you just saw him. Well, he is going. It's the odd couple, Jeff Snyder and Mark Andreco heading to Chicago to play Who's the Boss in a number one contender match. That's right, for the number one contender match, the winners of that will play the Shire Wolves for the championship. So, guys, right now, I would ask you to go over there, SchmodownLive.com, check out Trivia SD. William Bibiani is doing a great job managing all the writers over there, having a great time with all the articles that go up every single day. And check out Patreon, patreon.com slash schmodown. Go get our uh, our shows on, on audio. It's a, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It's a whole a lot thing. of things. All right, for the pit boss, Ken Napson, and check out Inside Schmodown every Monday on this very channel. And for me, Christian Harloff, I am the chairman. We'll see you next time. How's it going, Stace? Hey, Ken. What's up? Let me just say, I am so happy you decided to come and join, you know, join us in our righteous cause. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> you guys got us too. So, look, here's the thing. I hear you have, I hear talk that you have a new partner. And I just, I just gotta know, who is it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I can't tell you though. What? I can't reveal it yet. Come on, I am your, I'm your sailor mate. No, we're family now. Which means I'm entitled to know the information you know. No, 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 no. Something. I mean, I'll give you this though. This guy, he's super serious about winning. All right, me and Grace worked really hard to make this happen. And you guys are going to be happy with it. You're going to be thrilled. Okay, look, you don't got to tell the fan. You don't got to tell the whole league. Just tell me. Just me. Just a taste. Oh, my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. Let me just tell you, you can't tell anybody though, all right? Okay. Oh. <laughs> 